No answer at the house of Carillion chairman Philip Green. So far, attempts to talk to him about the company collapse and the way it was run have been unsuccessful. The former chief executive, Richard Housen, pocketed £1.5 million in 2016 in salary, bonuses and pension payments. He's also due to receive £660,000 in salary up until October, even though he left the company in September. The interim chief executive, Keith Cochrane, will receive a salary of £750,000 up until July, even though he will be leaving next month. And the former finance director, Zafar Khan, who left in September, was paid his year's salary of £425,000, even though he only worked nine months. The government said there'll be a fast-track investigation into the actions of past and present directors at Carillion. But one body that normally champions company bosses has already said Carillion was wrong to make it easier for executives to hang on to bonuses. Smaller contractors will be affected, all of the employees of Carillion, all of the people hoping to use the schools, hospitals, roads they were meant to build, will be looking at the situation and going, why on earth were they changing those bonus rules? The Carillion collapse was the main order of business at Cabinet this morning. Why did you ignore Carillion's profit warnings, Mr Grayling? The Transport Secretary under particular pressure because of rail contracts, but the whole government facing questions. Why, instead of intervening, did the Treasury ministers collude in the strategy of drip-feeding more contracts to Carillion to buoy up an obviously failing company? Secretary. If we look at the record of contracting, a third of those contracts were signed under the previous Labour government. And the most, one of the most recent contracts was signed by Labour-led Leeds City Council. It may take months to establish just who's responsible for this mess, but protecting jobs, livelihoods and services, that needs to happen in days.